The world is on the cusp of an energy crisis worse than the 1973 oil embargo of the West by Arab nations. Specifically, the United States of America is becoming the victim of this horrific crisis as the U.S. is woefully unprepared. This energy crisis is not only due to Russia's invasion of Ukraine, but other factors, like years of underinvestment in the energy sector, which have sent the world careening into a crisis that will exceed the oil crises of the 1970s and early 1980s. In 1973, the United States faced an oil export embargo when Arab members of OPEC decided to stop supplying oil to the U.S. This decision sent shockwaves through all of America and quadrupled the price of oil to almost $12 a barrel. The crisis was so severe that the U.S. had to ration oil supplies. A large number of Americans suffered both economically and socially, and it all felt like the whole U.S. economy would come crashing down. Now, once again, the U.S. is on the brink of the worst energy crisis in history. Unlike the 1970s episode, this one is not confined to just oil. Rather, it's going to be an oil crisis, a gas crisis, and an electricity crisis all at the same time. And many experts are of the view that this energy crisis is much bigger than the oil crises of the 1970s, and it will probably last longer. Let's dive into the real story about what's going on in the energy sector and how it affects everyone, specifically those living in the United States. The United States is the world's largest oil consumer, accounting for 20 million barrels of oil every day. The U.S. itself produces 18.6 million barrels of oil a day and is dependent on other countries to meet its daily oil consumption. On a global scale, each country consumes a proportional amount of oil regularly. The consumption varies time by time, so countries are often left with a surplus or a deficit depending on how much they actually consume. In the case of a surplus, they sell the excess to other countries that are facing shortages. And in other cases, they buy it back to maintain a consistent supply to their domestic needs. But what happens when everyone wants oil at the same time? As the United States produces the oil in surplus amounts, it's the wrong type of oil. That's because of a combination of economics and chemistry. We'll discuss the issue on some other day. So half of the U.S. production is exported to 176 countries. And then the U.S. imports crude oil to meet its deficient demand from Canada, Mexico, Russia, Saudi Arabia, and Colombia. Enter OPEC. OPEC is the Organization of Petroleum Exporting Countries. Its purpose is to ensure oil price stabilization throughout the international market without any major fluctuations. To resolve these issues, 13 major oil exporting nations created OPEC together. They currently control over 80% of the world's crude oil supply. Now, OPEC, in the middle of a global oil shortage, struck back at a time of record high inflation by cutting oil production again. It is a big deal that supply causes prices to increase even more during a time of high inflation and a heat wave cutting off water. Now, OPEC and its allies, known as OPEC Plus, agreed to cut production by 2 million barrels per day starting this month. The United States is of the view that this is being done in support of Russia, which relies on high gas and oil prices to sustain its economy. Whereas Saudi Arabia opines that the world is heading toward a global recession, which would push oil demand down, and they want to get ahead of it before it's too late to end the oil price crash. Now, everyone is curious to know, why is the U.S. suffering from record high gas prices, and why are experts calling it the worst energy crisis in decades? Let's dive into the answer. After the Saudi oil embargo in 1973, the United States created a strategic petroleum reserve to hold more than 700 million barrels of oil as a backup to avoid any emergencies in the future. This move pushed the prices up to nearly quadruple in a year, leading to rationing at gas stations. It also created a panic among consumers who began hoarding gasoline-related products. In 2020, due to the lockdowns, the U.S. refineries began to scale back on production because of a slump in oil demand in consequence of the domestic and international traveling restrictions. But following the lifting of travel restrictions by the U.S. and many other countries, and more signs of a global post-pandemic recovery, 
The aggregate demand outlook for oil surged in an unprecedented way. The U.S. printed trillions of dollars to boost its economy. In fact, the U.S. doubled its supply of dollars in just 12 months as compared to its 100-year-plus history of dollar printing. But refinery production failed to catch up to this sudden rise in demand as there isn't much refining capacity. The Texas's winter deep freeze is also breaking the oil refining and petrochemical supply chains. It takes years to set up an oil refinery. Today, 27% of the U.S.'s entire reserves have been consumed and have fallen to its lowest level in a single year since 1984. And reportedly, the United States has just 25 days left of diesel supplies. As global tensions cause delays in production and the freezing winter has started, a disequilibrium between demand and supply of oil is increasing drastically. To counter the OPEC plus cartel's production cut, U.S. lawmakers proposed a possible tool called the No Oil Producing and Exporting Cartels Bill NOPEC to tackle high fuel prices and it could open up members of OPEC Plus to antitrust lawsuits. This law would allow the United States to sue OPEC and its members for fixing and manipulating oil prices. In addition to that, the Biden administration has announced the release of 15 million barrels of oil from the United States Strategic Reserve, a move that follows contentious OPEC Plus production cuts. The Biden administration has called it a wartime bridge, as Washington and its allies barred Russian oil and gas imports over the invasion of Ukraine. However, the 15 million barrel release has sent the U.S. strategic reserve to its lowest level since 1984. By the end of October 2022, U.S. only had about 400 million barrels remaining in the reserve, a complex of four sites with deep underground storage caverns created in salt domes along the Texas and Louisiana Gulf coasts. Some opponents called it a political move to influence the midterm elections, as they're of the view that 15 million barrels in a month barely makes a difference when daily consumption is 20 million barrels. And many other studies show that the reserve can lower the prices hardly by 17 to 42 cents per gallon. This oil reserve release is aimed at ensuring there's enough oil on the market to ensure gasoline prices don't spike, no matter what actions Russia and other big players take. But according to the former head of the Energy Information Administration, Jay Hakes, quote, the administration's move is unlikely to lead to lower gas prices, end quote. The surging oil prices could lead a shift towards renewables. This may include the transformation to solar energy for domestic usage and shifting from gas-powered automobiles to electric vehicles. U.S. automakers have also seen enough to know that the future is indeed electric. For instance, Ford aims for fully electric by 2035, and California plans to ban the sale of gas-powered cars around the same time. Through 2050, it's estimated that natural gas will still be the most consumed source of energy. The U.S. has been going through a transition where renewable energies are the future, where electric cars and solar panels are the norms, but it's expensive and time-consuming. The majority of Americans are in favor of being carbon neutral, and as technology advances, it's going to become cheaper to manufacture. In the short term, though, it wouldn't be surprising if prices remain high, which would result in higher prices for everything that's dependent on oil. And in the long term, this will push the advancement of renewable energy, and in the next few decades, we could be at a point where foreign oil is not very important. Until then, though, it's best to cut back on what you don't need. Save money as much as possible, and in case of an emergency, keep funds on the side.